In this video, we're going to be going over habitat and niche, and this comes from the topic of biodiversity. Throughout this video, we're going to be covering the following topics. We will first go over what a habitat is and some examples of a habitat. Second, we're going to go over what a niche is and some examples of niches. Third, we're going to be going over what a niche breadth is. Fourth, we're going to be going over narrow niches and broad niches. Fifth, we're going to be going over some examples of narrow and broad niches. Sixth, we're going to be talking about generalists and specialists. Seventh, we're going to be talking about symbiotic relationships. And finally, eighth, we're going to be looking at a website for biodiversity within species. So let's get started with what a habitat is. So what is a habitat? A habitat is basically an ecological area where a plant, animal, or other organisms live. A habitat can also be where organisms can find food, shelter, and protection. Some examples of habitats may be islands, trees, rocks, jungles, forests, wherever. And at the end of this video, I'll be showing you guys a website that showcases the amount of live trees and environments around the world. So now let's go over what a niche is. So what is a niche? A niche is a role or position that an organism has in its environment. A niche helps to balance ecosystems by interacting with living and non-living things. Let's take an example to understand what a niche is. So here's a general example of what a niche is. A, B, and C individuals work in an engineering farm. The engineering farm is a habitat for A, B, and C individuals. However, A is an engineering department, and engineering is his niche. B works in finance, and finance is his niche. Similarly, C works in safety, and safety is his niche. All of the three individuals live in the same habitat, but they all have different niches. So here's a real example of what a niche is. So an island where four types of finches live. So let's first imagine an island where four types of finches live. They all look the same and have the same habitat, but they all have different niches. One of the finches eat insects, some eat seeds, some eat fruits, and others eat vegetables. Thus, they have different niches to balance the ecosystem. The different niches allow them to find food and helps them to survive. So now let's go over what a niche breadth is. So a niche breadth usually refers to the diversity of resources used by an individual, population, or species. There are three factors that affect the niche breadth. And these three factors are competition, so competition for food, the second one is predation, which is hunting for one another. And the third one is resource abundance. And this is struggling for survival if there's less resources. So the niche breath has two different types of consisting elements. And these are broad niches and narrow niches. So a narrow niche has less diversity of resources and a broad niche has a wide variety of resources. I will also be showing a plot right now showing the difference between a narrow niche and a broad niche. And in this plot, you can see that the broad niche is more is like covering a more surface area of length and the narrow niche goes up and goes right down. So now let's go in depth of what a broad niche is. So some example of broad niches are humans, rodents, house sparrows, and there's many more. So broad niches usually use a variety of resources. They must be able to eat a variety of plants or other animals as seasons and conditions change. And they must also have the adaptation to allow them to survive in the heat in the summer and freezing cold in the winter. And in general, organisms that survive here are broad niche. And these type of species are also called generalists. So now let's go over what narrow niches are. So some examples of narrow niches are giraffes, lemurs, dolphins, and most plants. So a narrow niche uses a less variety of resources. In the tropics, temperatures and food supplies are relatively stable, and plants and animals tend to have a narrow niches with adaptations directed towards competing for one dependable food source or one type of soil. Organisms in the narrow niche are also called specialists because they inhabit a single area and it also prevents any one species from spreading over a large area. So here are some different points covering between generalists and specialist species. So a general species usually have broad niches, they're able to adapt to many environments, they're less likely to become extinct, and they can tolerate many environmental changes. 
and especially species usually have narrow niches. They're less adapted to their environments because of the specialized needs. They're more likely to become extinct, and they cannot tolerate environmental changes. So that's just some different points for the generalist and specialist species. So now let's move on to symbiotic relationships. So symbiotic relationships basically describe two interactions between two or more species. And so there are usually four types of symbiotic relationships. And those four are mutualism, commensalism, paritism, and competition. So now we're just going to be quickly talking about in depth of all four of these types of symbiotic relationships. So let's start off with mutualism. So mutualism is when both species benefit from the interactions. It's basically just like you and your friend are helping each other on your exam. It's a plus-plus relationship. For example, plants and fungi. Many plants depend on fungi that help to absorb water and minerals from the soil. The fungi attached to the roots of the plant increases the surface area of the roots, and the fungi benefits by being able to draw nutrients from the plants. So that's why it's a plus-plus benefit for both of the species. So now let's talk about the symbiotic relationship of commensalism. So commensalism example could be, so during your test, your friend is looking at your answers. It basically won't affect you, but it does affect your friend. Your friend will benefit from it. It's a plus to zero ratio. So now let's talk about competition. So competition is usually when two animals are competing for food, land, or a mate. And this is a minus minus relationship. And finally, the last one, we have paritism. And some examples of paritism could be a dog and a tick, and a people and mosquitoes. So usually here, the parasite benefits, and the organisms that it's getting attacked does not benefit. And that's basically it for all the symbiotic relationships. So now I'll be showing you guys this website called Map of Life. Essentially, this website allows you to put biodiversity inside a map. You're able to see the different species and how much of them are in a certain area. You can also choose a certain place to see the biodiversity of the population there. So to do this, we're first going to go over to this map species here. And also the link of this website will be in the description below if you want to check it out. And from here, you're able to either choose the amount of species. You can search for a species and you can just click here. And then, and then from here, you can just choose a certain species. I'm just going to take one of these here. So for example, this butterfly here. If you just click on it, you can, you're going to be able to see where it is located inside of the world and how much they are. So we can see that this type of butterfly is found in South America over here. It's found basically all over North America, except for the upper part of Canada and Alaska. A bit of it is found in Africa, in Europe, and a lot, and basically it's found in all of Australia as well. Uh, and here there's a description of what it is. And basically, this just shows you the different places where it is. So coming back to the homepage of the website, I'm just going to go back to map species. And from here, instead of searching for species, I'm going to go over to this locations tab here. And clicking on this locations tab, we're able, so everything looks highlighted in different colors. And this is basically because you can choose at any spot of the world. So after you choose one spot, you're going to be able to see all the different, like, diversity of organisms that live in that certain area. For example, let's take a place in United States. Uh, we can take one in California. It shows us all the different uh, organisms that live here in California. And we're also able to download the full list if you want to see it there. But otherwise, it shows us all of them right here. So we have 450 different species of birds. We have 197 different species of mammals. 97 different species of reptiles and so on and we can also go in depth on these and click on uh, one of them for example the birds and you can see the different types of or, uh, species of birds that live here in California so we can see that we have the gadwall bird here the redhead the ruddy duck and so on so this is just a unique feature that helps you to see all the different types and as I said before we're also going to be looking at the trees as well so we can click on the trees and see the different types of trees as well. And now let's look at a different spot on the map here. So I'm just going to press on locations again. And since a pro very popular place is India, let's go over to India as well. So let's just take a random place in India. Right here, we can see that there's 331 uh, species of birds, 80 species of mammals, 
44 species of reptiles and so on here and if we click on the mammals we can see the all the different types of mammals that live here and let's try one more place maybe this time inside of Europe somewhere let's go inside of Germany and we can see all the different types of organisms here as well and we can see that there's way less reptiles here compared to the other ones but there's way more plants we can see here that there's uh, there's almost 3,000 3, species of plants that live here in Germany and yeah so this is basically a really unique feature that helps you to see the different types of organisms and species that live in a certain place and that'll basically be it for this video if you guys ended up enjoying this video don't forget to drop a like and subscribe because it does take some time to create these videos. And without further ado, I'll see you guys next time.